there were lots of options to choose when we're looking at Wisconsin, but we chose their offensive creativity. And, um, and you're going to see what we're talking about that. Cause Gary, as we, uh, we won't have time to pause and diagnose every one of these plays, but we're going to watch rotation by rotation and just some of the different offensive combination plays that you ran slide one go sometimes even a, a one gap go combination in some of these rotations just walk us through kind of what that offensive philosophy was and the creativity behind it yeah i mean this this offense that we ran kind of at the end of the season was was something that developed as we kept going based on kind of the lineup and, and players we had available as we went uh i mean our offensive philosophy in the long run is create quality swings and quality situations as much as we can. And whether that's led by your pass or your setter or your attacker, the more often we can get our hitters into openings where they can see space. So like here, our middle is hitting through space. That's the best situation we can get in. If not, we're trying to create it where the blocker is in a weakness, where they're still on their way up or they're blocking in a different gap than where we're trying to attack through. And so in, in our first three rotations, since we had a, a, a middle who was kind of being our right side, we were able to lot lot to use kind of the double quick offense where you're either running that's Anna Smrak number 14 she could run a quick in front of the setter or she could run a slide back behind and our other uh, middle Devin Robinson here who's running the slide back behind just creates a lot of pressure on the block to defend two first tempo swings uh, on an entire half of the court um, and that that's kind of kudos to those guys as they developed as players to be able to one hit first tempo at a really high percentage, but then also be able to hit second tempo. Um, so that was kind of in rows one through three, you could put a lot of pressure on different parts of the block, depending on what we had. So with, with Dana, a lot of blocks would kind of shade to her direction. So we could kind of emphasize different areas along the net and Sydney could kind of work the gaps based on that. Yeah. So we just saw Dana hit a slide in rotation three and now she's running a gap. So how, how were you deciding kind of what play to run at what time? Yeah, I, one of the things you, you watch this match with Nebraska, they're, how they were moving the ball around serving wise really puts a lot of pressure on different hitters in different scenarios. Uh, and so what we were trying to do is, all right, knowing that Dana is kind of a priority attacker for us, how do we put her in the best situation possible? But then knowing who their blockers were, how do we create that secondary swing that creates another option for Sydney? Uh, we didn't want it to be, a situation where we only could get the ball to this hitter in this scenario. And that's where this back row attack that we kind of had in rows four, five, and six came from is a lot of teams wanted to double up Dana. And so it just creates a lot of gaps for your left side and your, your, your back row attacker to try to get through. Uh, and, and that's kind of one of the things as we were going through have having Jade, our back row attack specialist here, uh, be able to hit through gaps that Dana would create or Devin would create on the slide. Yeah, and then that just opens up tons of one-on-one -on -one opportunities for your outsides. Yeah, the more we can create quality swings through quality space, and we, that just allows us to create kills. So when I watched your offense this year, I was reminded of the first year I was coaching high school volleyball. I was the ninth grade boys volleyball coach at Valencia High School in Southern California. And I remember printing up the rotation sheets and I would be in my history class at junior college or whatever. And I would write up all these plays like, like I was the Boise state offensive coordinator, right? I'm like, oh, okay. in rotation one, we're going to do this and this and this, and then we're going to do this and this, but it didn't take long before we realized like, it's hard to do that, but you actually were able to do that. Yeah. One of the big things for us this year was, was Gio, our, our defensive specialist, uh, and her ability to pass allowed us to change how we use that right side position when when our middle, Anna Smrek, came to the back row, allowed us to bring in another back row attacker. Um, so a lot of it was actually led from our passing more than our offense. It just created the opportunities from there. But in practice, it's, it's our hitter is good enough to be able to hit at a high quality level through all the different attacks that we're going to be asking out of them. Jalen, you mentioned a few minutes ago, Wisconsin's offense was good. Obviously they were. What, what made them so good looking at, at what they were doing from an opponent's standpoint? Uh, well, first, I mean, they have really quality athletes, obviously. And then, uh, you know, they pass the ball really well. So they're able to put Sydney um, in some really good situations, you know, over a long period of time. 
Um, and they just create a ton of, I think what Gary talked about, they, they do a really good job of, um, you know, it's hard to defend them because you don't even know where they're going to be to a degree, <laughs> you know, especially in rows one, two, and three. And, you know, it's, there's not like, okay, when this player runs this, they don't really set her, you know, it's, uh, um, cause we'll play against teams that do that where they'll, you know, they'll stack and they run these different combos and okay. Hey, when they, when you see this combo, they're really looking to set this player. And then if they don't pass well, they'll just set it out to the left. Um, hit Hilly is able to locate, especially overhead, um, a back set really well. So she, she can effectively set the, set the slide or the right side, um, you know, from 12, 13 feet off the net. So that makes it really, really hard because, you, you know, typically those balls are maybe either getting thrown into the middle or to the left. Um, so she's just, the setter is able to create so much stress. And then obviously, you know, all five of their attackers have the ability to kind of hurt you all over the court. So um, just, you know, for, you know, for us, just getting to play them a lot. I think we play them more than anybody, it seemed like in the last couple of years, uh, um, they just they do a really good job of just creating stress on you the entire time. And even when you feel like you got them, you don't you don't really think so because they can just they can make adjustments quickly because, um, you know, if they come out and doing all these different um, not lineups, but routes and stuff like that with their attackers, that's what they do normally do. So it's not like, you know, we feel like, OK, we got them on their heels because he because uh, Dana's staying in front the whole time. Like, <laughs> she's really good in front as well. And obviously Schmreck or Robinson and whoever's behind. Um, can put a ton of pressure on you too. Uh, Eric, I'd, say, oh. I'd leave with one thought here. Um, <clears throat> and Gary, I think you would agree that uh, it takes a lot of stars to align for you guys to be able to pull that offense off, right? You, a lot of your athletes were seniors um, or upper class gals, if, if that's what we call them. Um, they've had a lot of reps in your gym. Um, and, and you guys were able to do that because of that, I would think, um, you know, certainly at a high school level or a club level, uh, integrating a million different combination plays, stuff like that, uh, I think is a major challenge. So I would caution, if you're listening to this, I would caution coaches from going to practice tonight and integrating 15 different combination plays with your setters. Uh, keep it simple. I think, uh, Gary, you guys had a unique, uh, roster with a, a, a group of mature athletes that were capable of um, pulling off something that was, I think, pretty unique and special. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think we have a base level of our, what is our, our offense that if we're running at 80% of the time, we can feel really, really good with. And then we'll have the small variations based off of that. And so with a two middle, with a middle on our right side, we're basically running go quick slide and just getting really good at go quick slide, go quick slide, go quick slide. And then when we're in two hitter, it's go slide, go slide and getting really good at the play that you're going to run 80, 90% of the time, regardless of the level that you're at. And then you just find those little tweaks of what this player is, is good and available to do as they continue to develop throughout the year with your team. Uh, but I think when you're developing offense, it's about, all right, how do we get really good at something over and over again that we can repeat over and over again and create a higher level as we go through a season? And you can't do that without a lot of time and a lot of reps. So, yep. Eric, how would you recommend um, balancing doing what's simple and you can just repeat it over and over and over and over again versus uh, the desire to switch it up every once in a while? Yeah, I'm I'm on the mindset of the keep it simple as well. Like uh, we don't try to do 50 things at a medium level. We try to do five or six things at a really high level. I think it's important to have a wrinkle here or there, but, you know, if you're – if your slide go and it's functioning and rolling, it's hard to stop, you know? And so, I don't know, we're always trying to create balance. We're always trying to have balance in our offense. You know, Jalen talked about 30% in the middle, but it's kind of, you know, we want to be 30%, 33% on the right, 33% in the middle, 33% on the left. And as a defensive coach, you look at that and you're like, whoa, you know, where do we load up here? And so at some point, you know, when we're talking about that stuff too, we talk about at some point we're going to have to play someone that has balance and we got to be just great at reading the game. We can't just get great at loading up on one player. You got to, if you want to win this thing, you got to be able to, to play a Wisconsin or a Nebraska that have balance. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's kind of fun. It's, it's a shiny object, right? It's the lure that you feel fun chasing, but simple and be great. You don't have a ton of time in the gym. And if you can focus on one or two things, that's how you get great at stuff. So, yeah, Gary, I'm glad you you answered a question I was going to ask. How do you know when to move from 
stage one to stage two and sounds like once you can be about 80 percent then you'll move on to maybe your next little wrinkle yeah and we want to we want our comf- our our players to be really confident in what they're doing and so if that wrinkle creates less confidence then it's not something we want to be adding into our system uh i mean playing playing nebraska almost six times over two years uh every every match is going to be a different match but we've got to be able to do something at a high level over and over again so making sure we're really good at that level and maybe have one thing that we're adding in that's different but we want to be really good for long periods of time especially when you're playing against teams that've got really good defenses behind them all right we got one minute left gary will you give us just a, a slide training tip because i took the slide into my gym on monday and it was kind of ugly right because <laughs> i haven't taught slide uh, as as a coach but you know watching what you're doing and i know it's so important in women's volleyball how would you how would you teach coaches to teach the slide in one minute yeah, I, I think there's a lot of rhythm to attacking the slide. I mean, you talk about left side attack footwork is, is your left, right, left. We talk about the same thing with our slide attackers of getting the rhythm of a left, right, left approach, running and kind of going slow jog and do a run at the end. Um, when I'm teaching it to young kids, usually I ask them if they played basketball before, if they've ever done a layup, kind of just feeling that driving off one knee and dreaming being able to try to get up into that space. Uh, so we teach learn how to skip feel that rhythm of popping off that last foot uh, and going from a jog to a run uh, with the arms and then kind of driving straight up like you're going for a layup and trying to really create create forward momentum and vertical momentum. Uh, so that's where we spend most of our time when we're teaching that slide at the youngest ages. Okay, thanks. And uh, it was super fun watching your team this year. Super fun watching uh, all of you guys, Eric, uh, Gary, and Jalen. Uh, thanks for sharing your insights.